Hello. I wanted to take a moment to address the situation in Israel and to share my position on this very difficult subject with you all, the people of Pennsylvania's 6th Congressional District. There is really no shortage of grief in the world right now. I'm appalled by the heinous atrocities committed by the terrorist organization Hamas on the Israeli people and on other civilians. And I grieve with the families who have lost loved ones in Israel and in Gaza and in the West Bank and those who are working on the increasingly desperate humanitarian situation within the region, particularly those who are working to free the hostages held by Hamas. In the weeks since Hamas's reprehensible attack on October 7th, I have heard from many of you, members of our community, who have expressed your profound grief and anger for the loss of life in Israel and in Gaza. Some have lost loved ones or have family in harm's way. Some have family members in uniform on the front lines in the fight against evil. I've met with faith leaders from our community who have expressed their anguish for the events halfway across the world and their rightly placed concern for a rise of intolerance and hate right here in our own country. These tough conversations are necessary and they are appreciated and I'm so very proud of our community and the way that we have continued to reach out to one another in an effort to understand, instead of sowing division in an effort to pull each other apart. Our unity is our strength. We have not lost hope or the willingness to work together. The situation in the Middle East is dire. And let me again be clear, Hamas is a terrorist organization and has killed and harmed thousands of people, Israelis, Palestinians, and many others. I support Israel's right to self-defense and a targeted effort to destroy Hamas and their hold on the region and bringing their leaders to justice. There can be no lasting peace without that. Sadly, our country has been here before with our own fight against terrorism in the aftermath of 9-11. And I hope that the lessons that we learned will prevent Israel from making some of those same mistakes that we made in the two decades after that horrific attack on our own country when our own nation sometimes lost sight of the end goals and the very ideals we were fighting to protect. We learned that in fighting wars, that how you fight is every bit as important as who you fight. Israel has a responsibility to ensure that this war be fought in line with our shared democratic and humanitarian values and within the boundaries of established international law, including the law of armed conflict. It is a horrible fact of war that innocent people suffer but it is imperative that we do all we can to avoid indiscriminate death and destruction. Thousands of innocent people in the region have died, and thousands more are now in peril, either due to direct violence or from deprivation of basic human needs like food, water, and shelter. I join President Biden in calling on Israel to take a strategic pause. Such an action may allow for the safe release of hostages, particularly children, the elderly, and women allow for humanitarian aid to arrive, and for more innocent civilians to get out of harm's way. A pause may also allow Israel to better assess how to attain their long-term goal, a lasting and just peace for Israelis, Palestinians, and the immediate region. Americans know from experience that we cannot resolve the horrors and existential threats of terrorism, such as those that Israel now faces, by reflexive and military means alone. Despite our differences and perspectives, we must stand united in our pursuit of justice and aid for those in need.